Can getting more sleep help you lose weight? I'm gonna go over the brand new study that suggests that it can do just that. And it's coming right up. Overall, people have been getting less sleep over the last 20 years. We can look at studies such as this one, which is Trends in Self-Reported Sleep Duration Among U.S. Adults from 1985 to 2012. And essentially, they had sent out a large survey to Americans and just tabulated how much they said they slept. In 1985, people were getting about 7.4 hours of sleep. By 1990, it was down to 7.3 hours, and in 2004, it was down yet again to 7.18 hours. There, it sort of leveled off, and in 2015, it was the same 7.18 hours. And this might be due to many things, perhaps uh, streaming, uh, iPad, social media, that kind of thing. But when you look at the data, there's a lot more people getting five, six, seven hours of sleep, and a lot less people getting eight, nine, and 10 hours of sleep. And the question is, does that impact weight gain and obesity? We already know that people who work shifts, like working at night, for example, they experience a lot more obesity, diabetes, and heart problems. And it's probably due to this disruption in their circadian rhythm. And it's not just that they're working late at night, it's that their hormones get thrown way off. In this 2008 study called Adverse Metabolic and Cardiovascular Consequences of Circadian Misalignment, they did something very interesting. They took normal, healthy people and they put them on a 28-hour sort of night-day cycle instead of the normal 24-hour so that they could measure them when they're sort of in normal alignment and then they could measure them when they were completely misaligned, which is sort of like uh, staying up all night and sleeping during the day, for example. And when they measured their hormones, they sound, found something very, very interesting. That is the postprandial glucose and insulin were in fact much higher. So these were in the same people eating the same meal, but when they ate that meal and they were in this misaligned circadian rhythm, they would have much higher levels of blood glucose and much higher insulin levels. And the reason that's important is because we know that insulin is a fat storing hormone. It's the hormone that tells your body to take those calories and turn it into fat, which is storage, as opposed to using it to burn for energy. So the same amount of calories, same amount of foods is going to be much more fattening when your circadian rhythm is misaligned. And another very important metabolic effect that they found was that leptin is much lower. Leptin is the satiety hormone. That is, it tells your body to simply stop eating because you're full. If you are misaligned in the circadian rhythm, then leptin is much lower, which means practically that people are going to be hungrier. So they're not hungry because of some uh, you know, psychological reason that they wanna munch during the night. They're just hungrier because their hormones are telling them to eat. Their leptin levels are lower, so they don't get that signal to stop eating. And obviously these two very important facts are going to put them at much higher risk of obesity. Which brings us to our current study, which is to so show what happens when you take people who are sleep deprived and ask them to get more rest. This study, which was published in the very prestigious medical journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association, in April of 2022, was the effect of sleep extension on objectively assessed energy intake among adults with overweight in real life settings. What they did was they took 80 overweight individuals and looked for those people who were sleeping less than 6.5 hours, because they felt that these people might be a little bit sleep deprived. Then they randomized them. So they randomly chose half the group to just take their usual amount of sleep and half the group they told to get an extra couple of hours of sleep. 
and that they would measure their caloric intake and their energy expenditure. They tried to blind the participants to what they're really looking for by telling them this was a study really about sleep habits and metabolism as opposed to how much they ate. And it was successful. They could take that group in the uh, sleep extension and they increased the amount of sleep by about 1.2 hours on average from about 6 hours to about 7.2 hours. And what happened to the amount of food or the number of calories that they ate? Well, looking at the raw data, you can see in the control group where they uh, didn't change their sleep habits, they perhaps ate a little bit more. It was on average 115 calories more per day. But if you look at the data from the people who were asked to sleep that extra 1.2 hours, they had a clear tendency to eat less as well. It was negative. 155 calories. So the, the, the difference between the groups was over 270 calories per day every day for that study. When you plot the amount of time they slept versus the number of calories that they ate, there seems to be a fairly tight linear relationship. That is, in those people who didn't get enough sleep at baseline, the more they slept, the less they ate. And this was enough to translate into meaningful weight loss. The control group that slept the same amount gained on average 0.39 kilos versus the people who got that extra sleep and they were able to lose 0.87 kilos. And between the groups, that translated into a 3.9 pound differential. There was no difference in their metabolic rate and there is no difference in the total energy expenditure either. The reason that's important is because some people worried at the beginning of the study that if you're going to sleep for an extra hour point or an extra hour and a bit, you're going to burn less energy because you're sleeping, which is going to consume less uh, energy than if you're up and doing something. But it turns out that that was not a big concern. And neither was there a difference in the amount of energy they're burning while they were awake. It was really no difference. The big difference was in their amount of energy that they ate. So the takeaway is that if you are getting very little sleep, defined here as less than 6.5 hours a night, then you may benefit from increasing that by about an hour to an hour and a half. And that may make you eat less without really even consciously thinking about it. Why? There's two possibilities here. One possibility is that you have less opportunity to eat. That is, there's an hour or an hour and a half uh, chunk of the day where you really can't eat because you're sleeping. And that's a possibility and that's why fasting is so beneficial because you really can't do, uh, you're not really not eating and therefore you're burning your calories. But quite possibly you may be realigning with the natural circadian rhythm so that you affect those hormones. That is, you're going to have a little bit less of the glucose spike, a little less of the insulin spike, and your leptin levels may be a little bit higher, which is going to translate into a less fattening effect of the calories you're taking, but also that you're less hungry so that you're taking less overall, but you're doing it in, uh, in harmony with your body. You're not trying to force anything on your body. And that's why it's really important to look not just at your diet, but other things such as sleep. And this brings up a really important effect of sleep on weight loss. One of the things that not a lot of people think about, but is an easily actionable item to make it better. I hope you've learned something. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. They may learn something too. I'll see you next week.